Interesting. And then this quick one that I want to do first. It was it was a uh, an article about all the new you know COVID puppies or COVID dogs you know all the people getting new dogs right. right. I got my notebook. I got my pen. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. So what basically what they were they were saying was they were trying to tell tell you that um, it's bad to just now that you're going back to work you know your puppy will be bored and you need to figure out what to do with your puppy. And they were like really trying to this. It was like a Fox news article and they were trying to push dog walkers. Mm. So this is just a real quick opinion from you. Um, You know, how effective is a dog walker slash? Is it a good idea over maybe a conventional take them to daycare or, you know, just, learning in the crate, you know, because they're not going to die in a crate. Yeah. So what do you think about like using a dog walker is, do you think it's a, that beneficial of an idea or is it maybe even a negative thing depending? I mean, obviously dependent on your dog. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing I hear when I think bored puppy is that the person has not been proactive with teaching the dog to do nothing ahead of time, yeah. right? So a lot of existing with a dog and a lot of a dog's life is them learning to do nothing, yeah. right? Which is why we practice so many uh, stability duration exercises like bed stays, down stays, things like that, which is why we utilize a crate, which is why I have told every single one of my clients throughout this entire COVID situation that with their young dog, they needed to be, whether they were leaving the house or not, having the dog alone in a crate while you were not in the room, preferably if you were out of the room for a minimum of two to three hours a day. Yeah. Right. So first thing I hear is start prepping the dog for that now, even if you're working, because there's a lot of people that are still working from home. They haven't fully went back to the office. They don't know if they're going to go back. They might, they might not. Mm -hmm. Those people should be being very proactive about this situation currently and starting to get that under control. Right. Yep. <clears throat> as far as if you haven't done so yet, um, you know, I'll address the the question of the dog walkers versus the crate versus the daycare first. Then we'll get into different kind of tips and tricks that you could utilize right now if you're already going back to work. Right? Yeah. So as far as dog walkers are concerned, do I have an issue with them? Do I think that they're super harmful? Ninety nine percent of the time, no. Do I think they're unnecessary? <laughs> yes. Right. No. Unless you have literally like a 12-week-old dog, your dog should be able to hold it in the crate while you're gone for about eight to nine hours. Yeah. Right? Uh, Honestly, if your dog is past like a year or two, they should be able to hold it a little longer than that. Yeah. It's not ideal, but I always say, you know, I mean, there are plenty of days that my dogs are crated at home for 10 hours a day. Right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, is... Do I like that? No. But at the same time, you know, is there another option? Sometimes no, right? Dogs, unfortunately, have to adapt to our day-to-day routines, which means that when we go to work, Mm -hmm. they need to be able to be left alone for that time. Obviously, if you're going to be gone longer than like eight hours or so, you want to start to do some water management, some food management, Mm -hmm. which means that, you know, cut the dog's water a couple hours before you leave the house to make sure that... uh, You know, make sure that they don't have much in them. Same with their food, obviously. And Mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, take them for a long walk before you leave the house and, you know, let them burn off some physical energy when you get back home and stuff like that. Yeah. But some people live hectic lifestyles. I mean, there's plenty of people. Mm -hmm. Kate, my wife, uh, before we, uh, you know, before we met each other, uh, she's a nurse, right? Like, that means she's working 12 hour shifts, which means that there were times that her dog had to be home for 12 hours, Mm -hmm. right? Again, it's not ideal, but it is real life. Yeah. Right. So dog walkers can help in situations like that to be able to provide just a quick stretch of the legs. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going into it with anything or any sort of expectations other than stretch the legs and go to the bathroom, I think that at that point, you know, you're probably setting yourself up for failure as far as your expectations are concerned. But I don't think they're going to do any harm from that regards. Now. Let's say you have a dog that is struggling with uh, dog reactivity or lots of leash pulling issues or this or that. Having this dog walker then proceed to take the dog for a two-mile walk every single day is going to put the dog in a position where they're going to be rehearsing bad habits. Because no matter what, this dog walker is not going to be enforcing things the way that you would want them to. Nor is it their job to, frankly, unless you find some sort of trainer that's doing training dog walks, which is very unlikely as well. For sure. 
So dog walkers, yay or nay, if you got the funds for it and you really feel like your dog absolutely needs it, go for it. It's yeah. not really going to hurt anything. Um, but I do not think that they are extremely necessary unless you're in a position of, like I said, like nurse, doctor, uh, somebody where your dog is going to be home alone for well past the amount of yeah. time. That would be what I would consider acceptable. Um, putting them in a crate, that's the ideal one, obviously. If you're yeah. just working a typical eight or nine hour shift, um, your dog should be able to be in a crate, right? Yeah. And again, this goes into you should be crate training your dog well ahead of time, mm-hmm. right? I'm not trying to put anybody on blast, <laughs> right? But like, yeah. we've had a couple of clients lately, just one yesterday that I can think of that owns a, uh, a Belgian Shepherd, right? So mm-hmm. a high drive working dog. Yeah. That unfortunately they did not start crate training the dog until the dog was like six and a half months old. And uh, luckily, when they went to go do it, when we had that conversation, the dog adapted to it perfectly fine and it wasn't a big problem. But that could have been disastrous. I yeah. mean, you have a working dog that's young, energetic, curious, this, yeah. that, right? That you're saying is loose in your house, right? Mm-hmm. Another one we had recently was like a lab puppy or something like that. Dog's like 16 weeks old right now. And they're like, yeah. oh, we haven't used a crate yet, right? Mm-hmm. The dog doesn't like the crate. It's like, okay, cool. The dog needs to learn to tolerate the crate. Because here's the thing. Yeah. Right now at 16 weeks old, your dog is probably fine being loose in the kitchen. And it's not a big deal and stuff. But mm-hmm. I'm telling you, man, as that dog gets older, things get more interesting. The world gets more interesting. They start getting more bored. And then they start learning. I can go try this. I can go try this. I can get into this. I could chew on this. I could do that. And the problem is a couple things. One... I've got enough stress in my life where I don't need to worry about what my dog is doing loose in my house when I'm not there, which is why to this day I still create my dogs. Yep, exactly. Thing number two, any number of things in your house could kill your dog if they get into it. Yeah. Right? Do you want to risk that? No. Right? Because there's no guarantee your dog's not going to get into those things. That one-off chance they eat a bunch of uh, whatever, something that's toxic to them, or they, uh, you know, get an obstruction because they swallow something stupid that they picked up off the ground that you left laying around. Mm Mm-hmm. Bad news bears. And then to the daycare side of things, daycare is the most risky of all of them, right? We've talked about this before. This is the reason why we're restructuring our daycare in the first place, Mm -hmm. right? It's because most daycares are operated very, very improperly, and there's too many Mm -hmm. dogs. There's not enough control. There's not enough structure, and it could teach your dog bad habits. Your dog can get into fights. Your dog can catch diseases, this, that. It can become a big problem, Yeah. right? Um, So... uh, I would say daycare would be a no unless you find a really good structured one. Crate is an absolute yes, and it's something you need to start immediately with your dog. Dog walker is the one I'm kind of neutral about. Yeah, You don't really need it. I would kind of err on the side of not using it um, just because I don't really trust anybody else with my dogs. Yeah. Um, but it's probably not going to hurt anything if they're just taking the dog out to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Well, and, that, and <laughs> one of the things I really disagreed <laughs> with in the article um, – was they were saying that using a dog walker is a great way to get your dog socialized to other humans. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that it, it's a your dog's <laughs> getting used to being around a new person. But again, yeah, uh, if they, you know, if if they're not doing things properly, yeah, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good. And also, like any dogs that need assistance in socializing with new people, you probably shouldn't be having just some stranger do it in the first place. So, yeah, and as far as some people that are, you know, now in a position where they haven't done much with the crate, right, they, uh, you know, they have a dog that needs to start being left alone, they're getting ready to go back to work, and they're underprepared for it, Uh, biggest thing I would tell you is take three days, buy a crate, buy an e-collar, and start getting things under control quickly. You need to put that dog in a crate for four hours a day. You need to walk outside, hang out on your back patio, go in your hallway if you're uh, in an apartment building or something like that, have your e-collar on the dog, immediately start giving corrections for any nonsense in that crate, and start patterning in you leaving the house, coming back in, leaving the house, coming back in. When you come back in, let the dog out of the crate. Don't get the dog all riled up. Just ignore them. Let them chill out so they don't create this patterned association of we come back into the house, things are all exciting, get all jacked up, all that mm-hmm. good stuff, mm-hmm. um, and start getting it under control. Here's the thing. If you've prepped sooner, you don't have to do as much of that kind of stuff because you can get the dog used to just kind of working through it on its own. But mm-hmm. if you're in a pinch and you got to start leaving right away and you're in a situation where you have neighbors that are going to get disturbed by your dog barking or this or yeah. that, you have to start cracking for that right away and getting it under control. So you just got to do it. I mean, there's there's no magic trick to, to yeah. you know, very quickly create training a dog other than just getting them in the crate and doing it yeah you know exactly 